What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a loot filter in Project Diablo 2. I have been asked how to set one up or what loot filter I'm using on my Twitch streams at least a few thousand times. I'm going to show you guys how to set one up today and it is very easy. Three simple steps and you will have a custom loot filter that's just really going to make your life easier when you're playing Project Diablo 2. And a quick reminder for those that don't know, if you guys enjoy my YouTube content, I do stream twice a week on Twitch and I'm currently streaming the progression of my Windroid on the very first ladder of PD2. So if you guys hit me up with a follow, I'd really appreciate it. Link is of course in the description below. But guys, hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So like I said, it is three simple steps to set up a Project Diablo 2 loot filter. And the first is going to be to join my Diablo 2 Discord. Link is, of course, in the description below. If you don't have a Discord account, don't worry, it's free to make one. And I have a subsection where I have a couple pre-made loot filters that you can choose from. And of course, if you guys want to add more, just feel free to DM me or a moderator on my Discord. And we can add more loot filters just for more variation for you guys to choose from. But like I said, once you have joined my Discord... You're going to scroll down the side here to Diablo and at the very bottom under Project Diablo 2 you're going to click on PD2 loot filters and there's going to be a few different ones you can choose from. Uh, maybe by the time you watch this video we might have a couple more uploaded but there's this Chrisard's PD2 filter that's the one that I'm currently using and I have an A development PD2 loot filter as well as ETN Neanderthal's uh, Twitch streamer his loot filter so there's three different ones here you can download. Just start with the first one I think that it's pretty good for end game grinding or for working your way through the game that's the one I'd recommend you to start with. So step one is just going to be to download this loot filter. Step number two is to take the downloaded default loot filter file that you just got from my discord and you're going to copy and paste it within your project Diablo 2 folder. So go to where you have your Diablo 2 install, double click on project Diablo 2 because it has to be within this folder. So double click there and then copy and paste it into here and then you'll see it when you double click here on default. This is your loot filter. When you open it up, you should see this crazy line of text, okay? If you open it up and you just see default loot filter, nothing, I think was the sentence if you don't have anything changed, you did something wrong. You wanna make sure that you have all this type of coding. So that's really it, just step number two. Take that downloaded file, copy and paste it within your project Yellow 2 file and copy and replace this default filter that is just originally there. Step number three is to open your settings tab. So in order to do that, you just click control and left click down here on settings. And this is going to bring up the tab here. This is what I would recommend that you enable. So have always shows stat item ranges, advanced item display. That's really important. You have to have that on or it won't show the loot filter. And then drop notifications, item close notifications and item detailed notifications. All this other stuff only shows if you disable advanced item display. So you wanna make sure you have at least this checked off and then everything else is kind of optional up to you but this is what i currently have run so you can just mimic what i have and then to close it just right click now just to show off what it's going to look like here um so they just changed a couple small things like it'll tell you an amulet here you can use it to create a caster amulet with a perfect amethyst realm or a jewel a couple small things like that uh charms Oh, these are identified, I guess. It looks a little bit different if they're unidentified, which I'm going to show you guys an example of Chaos Run so you can kind of see what it looks like, but it's pretty easy. I mean, it's a nice standard loot filter. It's pretty clean. It shows like Elverun here. It'll show the quantity. So if you throw a stack on the ground, Elverun times five, and you can kind of see like you have to add a cube to cube it up, whatever. And I just, here's all my runes that are in the order of what they dropped. And so you still see like you still see the stat ranges on the rune words because you have that enabled on your settings but yeah that's basically it guys three simple steps you should have a pd2 loot filter up and running so i'll just do a quick chaos run and i'll show you guys what it looks like with the drop notifications and stuff so my druid is a little bit stronger than the previous build video that it just released i was kind of mostly focusing on farming the pits now but i can do chaos sanctuary it's a little bit slow going compared to the pits and technically there is the same amount of drops but it's just nice for variety. You don't want to farm the pits hundreds of times. Okay, so here's a good example right off the bat. Certain items like grand charms, uh, small charms, jewels, etc. You'll get this little drop notification that pops up. And if you look on the screen, you see this little purple dot? That notifies you where it is. So there's no way you're going to miss like jewels, grand charms, small charms, that kind of thing. Even though that was garbage. That's a really good example there. It shows you exactly 
it's like. And I believe it's small charms, jewels, uh, rare rings, rare amulets, unique jewelry. Uh, certain specific rares that are more valuable, or sorry, more uniques that are more valuable than others. And there's short names like mana pot, health pot, uh, R for rejuve. Gold piles below 5,000 won't show up as well. So again, with just the goal of trying to reduce clutter as much as possible. I do really like the fact that you just have to copy and paste a default, uh, like a pre-made configuration file. I mean, it's a lot more different to inject the slash Diablo into like vanilla pluggy. So it's a very, again, it's definitely a lot easier to set up. Now there's another example of Grand Charm. You can see on the screen that purple dot again. Pick this one up. Three to maximum damage, 16 to life. I like the way that they look too. It's just Grand Charm, nice little purple dot on both sides. It's just a very clean looking loot filter. I've used some of them on the Path of Diablo, like the loot filter of the website, and some of them are nice and some of them are just pretty crazy in terms of like asterisks and, you know, fur rune and a million signs like across the screen. This is just a very nice kind of Feels close to the vanilla D2 experience, it's like clean loot filter. And for flawless skulls or flawless amethyst, emeralds, sapphires, rubies, etc., you have a different colored asterisk beside. It's like white for diamond and then it's green for emerald. Red for ruby, purple for amethyst, etc. So you're never gonna miss out on like specific flawless gems that you're maybe looking for. Like if you're trying to round up a bunch of flawless amethyst to do some crafting, like there's sapphire example, blue asterisk. Again, in my opinion, a nice clean looking loot filter, but not uh, not too overpowering. And then there's our. You can see difference 35, and then you can see uh, full, it's a full rejuve. Portal Shrine. And there you saw white phase blade base, so specific items make maybe phase blade for grief or whatever. He has them highlighted, like the same with white monarchs, if a white monarch drops. You'll see that notification up in the corner. Oak Sage does not last long against Infector. Because it's immune to physical, but not elemental. He really does not last long. Don't die, Merc. Oh, Stone Skin too. Hey, I didn't have to- oh, look at that. I just didn't have to heal my Merc. I may honestly go back to Pits. I'm not sure because Pits is a little bit cleaner going. Depends on the spot. It's mostly just Stone Skin at this point that's the real run killer. The unfortunate part, there's like that green asterisk I was talking about for uh, emeralds. I dropped a legacy Reaper's Toll. Reaper's Toll was supposed to have a 16, a uh, level 16 amp damage, and I dropped a, I guess a mistake in the coding, a level 1. So they updated uh, the, with a patch to adjust it, but it's still level 1 for me, so unfortunately I need to try and hunt down a second uh, Reaper's Toll at some point. You can see, like, overall, loot filter is pretty cool. Like, those drop notifications showing up on the map. It's very clean, too. Not overpowering. No way you're gonna miss a wind force on a bail wave. We learn from our mistakes.
Okay, just to say some vizier. There's another Grand Charm drop. I think my favorite aspect is the way that it shows up on the on the map. Like you can't you can't miss it. it shows up in the corner, Grand Charm drop, and then you see a big purple dot. Well, little purple dot on your map. Just can't miss it. And it looks really clean too, Grand Charm. Two purple dots on each side. And another junk one. So what do you guys think? Maybe I should head back to the pits? I can clear chaos, but I can definitely clear the pits a lot faster than what I can do chaos run. Just Diablo left. <coughs> Excuse me. Not even death can save you from me. Hey, a mall and a GC. Anybody want a bone snap? <laughs> That'd be pretty good for a barbarian. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and found it informative. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below if there's any other tutorials or guides that you'd like to see me make for Project Diablo 2. And as always, if you guys could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my YouTube channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube and I stream twice a week on Twitch. So a follow on Twitch and a sub on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin'-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.